Hello. Do it in your drag voice. Okay. Okay. Mm. <coughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Free Rotation Podcast. Woo! Like, <laughs> <laughs> just staring at me. That's odd. And we are back. Hello again. We are here today with a brand new episode we're bringing to you. I'm joined with my buddies. Hey, Chris. Hola. And Angela. Hey. And we're not talking about drag queens today, even though it's Pride Month, and I do a great drag queen king slash whatever kind of voice. We're talking about everybody's favorite video game where nobody rages, Valorante. Never. Uh... (laughs) Just as a clarification. High wires. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I was about to say, as a clarification, we have previously done this episode, but you never heard it because we just never got to release it. So we were like, hey, you know, it'd be great. Let's release that Valo episode. And then guess what happened? Everything became, what's the word? Not valid. It's not relevant anymore. Not yeah. uh, relevant. Yeah. I think we did it like right at the beginning of act two. And now we're in act three and everything has changed. So if you don't know anything about Valorant, it's our favorite video game. And uh, it's a little surprising that you did not know that we liked playing Valorant. I do love Valorant. It's a, it's a, it's a good game. I can't quit it. It's, it's my so broke much, back. It's so much fun. It's 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 a five. Yeah. Think If you know anything about CSGO, think of CSGO, but combine it with Overwatch. So it's a 5v5. Ta- it's because of the abilities. That's yeah. where they kind of compare it to. Um, 5v5 tactical shooter um, where you... And your teammates are, I don't know, these agents who are planting trying to... Planting in... Planting, yeah. It, trying it, to get it, either yeah. ra- save your Radianite or steal yeah. the Radianite. That's the backstory. Yeah, it's attack and defend. Yeah, yeah. it's just a mm-hmm. tower attack, tower defense. Yeah. Basically, the whole idea of the game is either you, you set a bomb and make it go off, or you defuse the bomb mm-hmm. after someone's planted it. That's really it. Yep. 25 rounds and unrated. And if you go up 12 on your attack, then you only have to win one on defense. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's it, it's 12 before the switch. So we have, pre- like I said, we previously talked about it. But um, if you are not familiar with the game, it's actually been out for over a year now. Actually, this yeah, it's year. year. Yeah, it's this been a year. This is a one year mark. One mm-hmm. year mark. And me and Angie have been playing since beta. Um, when it was literally people just spamming like tabs yeah. and tabs of web uh, pages mm-hmm. and Twitch just to get a drop. If you remember Becky's New Year's resolution last year, it was to find an FPS shooter I'd play with her and like, well, success. I did it. One thing in my list that was correct. I was very close to also being a sea captain. Mm-hmm. So what else about Valorant? <laughs> <laughs> so we've been playing since beta. We got Chris involved last year february ish february ish i think oh man it feels like it was last year (laughs) during the time in which valorant has been out um there have been a lot of changes um just a little bit of background for valorant um the entire story basically takes place on all what how do you explain it like it's multiple universes or i guess well so you start off thinking that something strange is happening to to earth and we do know it is earth because it's like venice gets attacked and buenos Aires and some other stuff well then you realize that it's actually alternate realities imposing on each other. And uh, this company called Kingdom, which is like a one world government, is digging up Radianite, which um, they're using to power stuff, but they're also using it to for weapons and they're trying to take over alternate realities. So there's another alternate reality that's out of Radianite. Right. And they need to steal ours to power theirs, which has gone dark. That's why you see black and white on when you look on a scent you look through it's a black and white universe which it's now down. which it's funny now we're doing this episode it's a good thing we are because we finally do have lore like mm-hmm. i think the first time we did it we had like the projected lore which was this but it hadn't been confirmed by riot so mm-hmm. right like the alternate realities yeah. was just conjecture but now it's basically been confirmed that to explain the game because you have different agents um i think we're up to like 15 now you 16 is 16. it 16 yeah. 16 oh with God. ko oh yeah that guy came out but with the um with the explanation is why you have duplicates on other teams um because instead of it being like csgo where you're playing as like counter terrorists and terrorists it doesn't really matter what you look like uh you have your alternate across from you who is like your carbon copy basically and the way they explain it is your universe is fighting against this other universe either trying to take your radiantite 
or trying to, or you're trying to take their Radiantite. So mm-hmm. um, basically that's their in-game explanation as to sort of the agent's existence. Right. And that's why when you quote unquote die in a Radiantite explosion, you'll come back because it's just another you. Yep. There's also conjecture based on the icebox map that you're also a clone agent. So when you, there's an original kept on ice, but you're, you are a clone of it. That's so why just infinite clones. Right. That's why if you die, you come back the next round because they just sent out another clone. Sure. It's kind of scary when you think about it. Yeah. And Whatever. you can see the clones on Icebox. Yeah. 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 Big drawing point to Valorant versus something like CSGO is that there are agents involved in each in different roles in the game. So you have your entry fraggers, you have who are called duelists, basically. You have controllers, you have initiators, you have sentinels, and or you have people who also defend the bomb, which are called sentinels and controllers. So the big draw there is a lot of people play different types of agents and based on your role and how the game is sort of played, you're hypothetic. Oh, hello, kitten. The the draw to the game is that there's more of a layer of gameplay in which you are playing as a certain type of agent with certain type of utility. Um, So we all have our own. Everybody has a role to play. Yes. On a five stack, which is all five members that know each other. Everybody has a role, something they're supposed to do. As an initiator, as a sentinel, um, it just depends on what your role is and what you're good at as to which agent you prefer to play with. Right. If you if you look at sort of the tier of what you're looking at, you have initiators, which are supposed to help initiate you to get onto a site. So you have characters that'll either blind or reveal other enemies on the site so you can sort of get some sort of info or sort of assist your duelist into getting onto the site. Yep. Followed by that would be your duelists, who are basically their entire utility kick is to kill people. I mean, that's really the only way you can really explain. Either it's a hoot. It is. It's it's quite a thing. But yeah, like a duelist, they're they're one on one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you, you can get go one v five as a duelist, but really it's that's tough. just the one. Yeah. Yeah. But Unless you're, you're duelist, Reina. you you want to go pick one on one fights while your team does other stuff. So uh, as an initiator, it, it starts off. It should start off with an initiator gathering information about a site. Yeah. And then your duelist determines a plan of action. And you really should, as a duelist, say, this is what we need to do. Right. Um, as support characters will follow the duelist. And then once the spike is planted, they go back. And controllers control the site. Duelists control the flank. I mean, uh, sentinels control the flank. And duelists go look for duels. Kills. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so if you have people who don't follow their roles or you play on a team where it's like, oh, you're the entry fragger. Go entry. With, yeah. with no backup support. It's yeah. It's a very difficult. It, it's much right. more multi layered yeah. um, than what. So as you opposed see from like sniper versus SMG boots on the ground, it, there there are roles that really need you need to play your role, right? Because your abilities are geared to those roles. So initially, with the original release of Valorant, um, there were it was a very limited pool of agents that were released. So for the last year, they've probably released I think maybe six or seven different agents that have come out. Um, and all different capabilities. So you have your duelists, your initiators, your controllers who have come out, and your sentinels who have sort of come out. So there's a huge pool now of characters. Well, a lot of the the big change-ups now for Act 3, because we're now in Act 3, go figure, is that they are trying to start teaching people to limit the use of their utility, really har- like harness their gunplay, because the biggest criticism of Valorant is the gunplay issues. The problem is they're attacking that without actually attacking the gunplay issues. Right. They're saying you shouldn't have utility, but we're also not going to fix the flaws with the guns. Right. And what we mean by flaws with the guns is running and gunning. You're running and jumping, flying around the corner, and you headshot consistently. It's... Yeah. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Yeah. You can shoot a gun that has like a a 23% accuracy, and you're going to nail like three headshots out of five. Right. And in Valorant, your biggest the biggest way to kill people is with headshots, which is, I guess, counterintuitive to a lot of like actual gun shooting pew pewness. Right, because you go for center mass. The biggest thing about, but that's the biggest thing right now with Valorant, is that the fact that they are sort of limiting utility. And uh, the biggest complaint that was coming out of the, probably the last year, is the amount of agents and their utility is that the post plant was getting much more difficult for people to deal with. Right, because you have your controllers who, it, their whole job is to protect the plant. Well, it happened a little too well. Like, they could go off-site, hide, 
and, and still just protected. still still fuck you up. And by what I mean by post plan is uh, people who are on attack. You have uh, there's different sort of stages in the game if you think about it. So there's pre plan and post plan. So once you've planted the bomb, it's how do you defend the bomb from the defenders coming to take and defuse the bomb? Because once you plant it, there's still a good thirty minute. seconds. Yeah. yeah, is it thirty seconds? I think it's thirty seconds. It might be longer. It feels like forever. It feels yeah. like forever. Yeah. So once, let's say we're running onto a site and we manage to plant the bomb, well, we don't just win right then. Then they have a certain amount of time that the op- the opposing team can come, basically defuse the bomb, so that if we plant it and they get the defuse off, they win. Yeah. Doesn't matter how many people are alive, if they manage to defuse a bomb after we've planted we lose. And that's sort of where the layer of the the gameplay for Valorant kind of diverts from CSGO is the fact that there are agents that are literally made to defend the bomb post plant and um, ensure that the plant goes Mm -hmm. off. It's 45 seconds and it takes 7 seconds to defuse. Yeah. God, it feels like it takes forever. 45 sounds about right. I was like, 30 sounds low. 30 sounds really low because it does feel like forever Mm -hmm. when you plant the bomb. Yeah, four seconds to plant, seven seconds to defuse. Okay. The big issue that a lot of people were having in Valorant is you were starting to have agents that, or people were getting just too good with their agents. So it's like, okay, I now know the lineup to ensure a lineup where I can throw my utility and just basically ensure that nobody ever defuses the bomb. Big draw now is that they wanted to bring down the utility use and focus on the gunplay use. So what we've seen is that every agent has had some sort of nerf to their abilities um, in order to, I guess, force players to start using their guns more. Which it did. It didn't make a lot of sense to me because at the end of the day, the game is a shooter. It would make sense to me if they fix the gun issues. Yes. Right. Right. Because again, I came from Call of Duty playing this. There were a few gun issues. Usually, if the only issue you had was they were way too strong, and they'd have to nerf them. You still had your, your recoil. You had guns that were only good at close distance. But there, right. you weren't just... Mm-hmm. You, there are no running headshots. It's not if a If you don't know thing. if people are running aimbot or if it's the fucked up game. Yeah. Because how do you consistently get headshots when you're running and gutting? Oh, because Valorant has serious... Pro- and they did come out and say they had serious programming issues that they didn't fix. Yep. Well, fix it. Yeah, they, absolutely. And to be fair, and to be fair to Riot, though, they have been very open about it, and that they are trying to fix it without breaking it. If if that makes sense. Last night was probably the first time we've played that. We've played well. Basically, it was the first night that the new patch came out for Valorant. Mm-hmm. I mean, I couldn't really tell a the difference. There's a new agent. That's the difference. That was yeah. like the, and I mean, our abilities it cost honestly more. Honestly, seemed like the headshots were worse. The running and gunning yep. headshots. It, it's like let's prove that Riot made no changes. And it's like I got hit with a bucky, which is a shotgun. And uh, sure, it's close distance, but eight shots directly to the head, all of them. Right. It's a shotgun. Right. And the thing is, like, the guns especially, each gun, there. I mean, there's categories of guns you can buy. And if you read the patch notes that came out like, yeah, yesterday, I mean, they say on there we've upped the air uh firing error for these running and gunnings um, by a certain increment. And it just didn't, I mean, it kind of felt like it was just like a normal day of playing Valorant. Yeah. I didn't notice any difference at all. I mean, other than the fact that now, like I think Ray's abilities are like her ultimates up to eight now, instead of like, s- yeah. or same with Angie's Angie's yeah. main. Each of us really do have like awesome. sort of a main. I play a truly support more. main. Right. And like she has an ice field and it's small. It's not huge. Keep in mind, they've already nerfed her once. Like, her wall can break. They've been nerfing her since beta. And she has no damage capabilities other than my gun. It's a slow. And there's a wall. Ooh. (laughs) Now, the resurrection going from seven to eight, sure. That's like having a six-man team. Yeah. But, I mean, I... Okay, but raise. Like, you just keep nerfing raise until she's unplayable. Yeah, She's just unplayable now. It's tough. Especially since her fucking ult is broken and it has been since beta. Yeah. It, like, you can shoot it directly at somebody if they jump. It just misses. I uh, I had Go some, in the air. We were playing last night, and I play Raze. That's my main. And she's basically as aggressive as a character can be. She's like a chaotic... Like, I, I always compare her to, like, Jinx from uh, League of Legends, yeah. if anybody knows that reference. I think Harley Quinn, how chaotic Harley Quinn but is. But very sweet. Yeah, but she is sweet. But yeah. she has an ultimate where she gets a rocket launcher and she can launch a, launch a rocket launcher at whoever and it can do a bunch of damage. 
Well, I had a gentleman trapped in hookah, which is a it's an enclosed room last it's night. Very small room. I launched I ultimated it on him, launched my rocket at him, he jumped and then promptly did not die. Yeah. And like Everybody knows, there's just nowhere jump. for him to go. Either stand completely still or jump and the result's gonna miss you. Yeah. And it's just gonna go right through you. Well, and that's sort of the thing that um we probably need to back up to is that each of these agents have abilities. Their ultimates are things that are either supposed to basically like slow you down or kill you at that yeah, point. Yeah. They're, they're game changers. Right. So like, uh, and each one of them has, I mean, they're really, powerful. they are game changers. Should yeah. be useful. If Ray's ultimates and it comes near you, you should die. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cause it takes me forever to get yeah. that ultimate, mm-hmm. but no, like there's yeah. been, there've been instances where I have, it has hit at people's feet and they just survive it. And I'm like, right. And you okay. gain ultimate points with kills. You pick up orbs to gain it. Um, plant defuse. Yep. You get ulti points. So there are ways to get it faster, but you have five people, yeah, all actually trying. 10 people trying to get these points. Yep. And there's usually two orbs per map. Yeah. Plus per- they've changed where Ray's doesn't just auto, like when you click fire on this grenade launcher, it takes like 1.2 seconds. Yeah. yeah. It takes forever. You're dead. Yeah. Like, we know we can kill Ray's before she shoots it. So you've got to fly around the corner and shoot blind. Or you have to pull it out before you get to a site if you know there are people right. there. And right. then it's on a timer. It doesn't stay. Like, no. Jet's ult just stays. It doesn't run out. Ray's yeah. ult runs out. Ray, uh, right. Ray's ult takes, I think it's gone it in cools. six and a half seconds. Yeah, it's gone. I mean, you can pull it out so when you whip it back out, you don't run through the animation and you can just do X and shoot. But back in the day when Angie played Rays and Beta, it was like pretty much instantaneous. Her stuff oh, came you, out. Well, yeah. And the ult actually did what it's supposed to do. And you, ki- I mean, it could kill you. Them. It could kill your teammates. Well, you're going to kill yourself if you're close, but you killed all of them. Can confirm you can still kill yourself if you're close <laughs> to it. Yeah. yeah. I let that thing rain down as soon as possible every map. Yeah. And sometimes you're caught in the crossfire. Uh, worth if you, or if yeah. I can again she's so she's just a super aggro like uh duelist if I can go one for one and hurt like wound another member of their team deal yeah I'll take the death to but because kill race them. players are generally really good they're duelists and uh, because they're so good she gets nerfed into oblivion and that's unfortunate because she wasn't broken before <laughs> and now you have fixed her also like I you really a... saw her in competitive if you watched like the radiant players. They didn't play Rays. Tiny did. And sometimes Flights, but he'd switched. I am not a uh, elite Rays player. I just think she's fun as hell. Yeah. She is really one of those pl- characters that if your first entry in, like, talking about Rays, one of the, uh, your first entry into sort of an FPS in, the, in general, like, you can at least ensure that you are doing something to help your team. Yeah, she's the closest. And again, I came from Call of Duty and Halo. She's the closest to those games that really exist. Yeah. Um, her abilities are all shooter abilities. She doesn't have the ability to resurrect somebody. Right. She throws explosives. Yeah. She doesn't mm-hmm. teleport. She doesn't. She throws blast packs, which are just C4. Yeah. She She's the closest to the, the Call of Duty when you have a grenade and a rifle and you mm-hmm. run around shooting people. Yeah. Cool. I know how to play That's that game. That's pretty much it. <laughs> well, and on top of it, a lot of these agents, they're, the biggest thing I've noticed now is that the maps themselves, there's how many six maps now Uh, it's six it's six maps six maps out that on top of it you have these abilities either being nerfed but there are certain characters that just have better advantage on certain maps versus disadvantages so one my main is uh, a a character called killjoy which her entire kit is to defend hold flanks and basically remove people outside of the area you're trying to get to and then certain maps she works real well. Like, I would say Split, that's probably her best map. When I get to somewhere like Breeze, which is the biggest map in the game, mm-hmm. her little, her big old ult on most sites is very, very tiny. Yeah. My tiny little wall and small ice patches, really, you nerfed it? After you <laughs> put out this Ginor- humongous and map. If you don't understand, Breeze is a, it'd be huge in, like, Call of Duty standards where your guns are slower and more accurate. It is huge in any first-person shooter I've ever played. Yeah. This is just a big map. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those maps, like, each map sort of has a has a different theme Feel. to it. Um, so the original three maps were very much like, here's some great basic maps for you guys to learn yeah, on. Yeah, city maps. Yeah. yeah. And then um, progressively the newer maps came out, and each one 
Each one has kind of felt like, I don't know how I'm ever going to learn how to play this game ever again. Well, Breeze being the most difficult. And here's the thing about Breeze. Riot has basically said all of their maps are going to be reflective of Breeze. Again, so it's not that it's a bad map, because it's not awful. It's just the problem with it is that you're on a 5v5 on a map that has two plant sites, which are on opposite ends, and it takes forever to run from one to yeah. the other. So if you don't pick right, if mm-hmm. you... If you send two people defending at site A, right, and they send all five of theirs at site B, you're in a lot of trouble because they're going to kill. Mm-hmm. It's a three on five at best. And then there's only two points the easy way in. Yeah. Otherwise, you've wasted 30 seconds trying to get around to them. And you have 45 total to yeah. get there. Yeah. Right. That, that's the problem is it cuts your it cuts your time to be able to make in-game decisions that really – because you you, even if you get there – and they've taken out the other three, and let's imagine your team took out one of them. If it's a five on three, that's not a bad if they get one of them and don't. Right. So mm-hmm. suddenly it's a four on two. But they're also defending, and it took you 30 seconds to rotate, which means you have 15 seconds to engage. I just feel like with Breeze, we should just there. sit and spawn. I almost said shit and spawn. Same thing. <laughs> yeah. Sit and spawn until they plant, and then rotate as a team. I wonder. And then converge. I think that's what the theory is, is that Icebox, which was the map to come out prior to Breeze, and Breeze are the two maps that you play for retake. So it's not so much defending the maps like you would on Haven yeah. Bind in so a sense. So you've gone against the point of your split. own game at that yeah. point. The problem, well, that, the problem with that is, is Breeze is so big, it takes you so long to get over there for retake, you don't have time to engage and then disappear. Right. Yeah, you're rushed and you die because you don't have a you're choice. rushed. Right. You literally have, if you run from A to B, you maybe have 16 seconds to mm-hmm. get on site, figure out where the other team Remember is hiding. Remember seven seconds to defuse. Yeah, kill them. And go defuse the bomb. So realistically, you have nine seconds from the time you make it to site to find them, engage them, kill them, yep. and get to bomb. Well, and I yeah. kind of think that the Breeze, the map itself, was foreshadowing what was going to happen in Act 3 because they were talking about relying more so on gun skills. This map being as big as it is, it makes it very difficult to either defend it or attack it on certain ca- well, on agents. To me, it's like you nerfed your agents to say your map is viable. Like, mm, we're going to, because at that point, Viper and Killjoy just, oh, it took, you only have nine seconds? Yeah. You're never diffusing. Yeah, nothing you oh, do. So let, let's just nerf the uh, agents and introduce this agent that says you have no abilities. So, I, again, I, I wouldn't Give me mind a fucking that. fucking break, right? I wouldn't mind that scenario if, the, if they fixed the guns. Yeah. If the Vandal operated like a, like a commando in, or a commander in, uh, Call of Duty, mm-hmm. which is their long range assault rifle, I'm on board. Yeah. The problem is it doesn't. No. You can't sit still and shoot it because you're just going to die to somebody jumping through the air and just and headshot flash firing. Not only that, but there's it seems like you have more stability running. If you stand, even if you crouch and shoot, the recoil is yeah, horrific. Yeah, it just kills you. But if you're running and gunning, the accuracy is incredible. So, and also, like, it's really weird, but you cannot, like, you can't zoom in. Like, you can't look. A, uh, you can't ADS, aim down scope, in Valorant, because you'll just die. Yeah. The guns feel slower. They're less accurate. There's and they more are. Recoil. They, it's so really weird. I didn't realize that the guns shot faster without ADS. Yeah. Like, why the fuck is that a thing? Uh, just I'm, because I'm scoped down doesn't mean the trigger pulls slower. And again, yeah. this is me calling for Call of Duty, where you, if you have an assault rifle, you have to ADS 90% of the yeah. time. You just get so right. used to that habit of mm-hmm. aiming down sight and peeking a corner. Whereas this one, if you aim yeah. down sight and peek a corner, you just get headshot and You're die. You're done for. Right. You yeah. And it's just somebody, it's not them waiting on you yeah. to peek. And they're not it's scoped. Them, they're just standing it's there. It's just hip spray shot. and pray and yeah. you just die. And, and you're with like, a headshot. That's it. it and again, it took me months to figure out that I don't need to aim down sights. I can just mm-hmm. swing over them and pull the trigger and die. Yeah. And they die. Unfor- like, unfortunately, like initially when I first started playing too, it was like my... I just ads and finally Andrew was like, I think you're going to have to stop ADSing you because do. you're never going to get a kill. And once I was able to figure out how to do it, because honestly, when I first started playing this game, it gave me like horror nightmares because it was so scary, like waiting for somebody to pop around a corner and shoot me. Now I'm the one who's like chasing people. But at the same time, it's like you're just waiting for somebody to show up because you think that you're going to be fast enough to kill them eight on an ADS and it's not. They just jump around the corner and fire a shot. And it's going to kill you. Yeah. They're not, they don't know you're there. They just fire 
And it's not getting lucky. It's bad programming. Yeah, there's a thing in the game called pre-firing where you just jump into corners and shoot. And yeah. if somebody's there, they die. And if they're not, who cares? You wasted one round. Like, right. How is this a thing? That's it. You don't yeah. have to be good. You just have to jump and shoot. I mean, it's the same with the peeker's advantage. Like, yeah. you get... There's a whole theory about the fact that if you if you are the one doing the peeking, you are going to have the advantage because your ping or anything to that extent, if you're pre-firing with it, you're going to get somebody. Yep. Yeah. So there are a lot of, I mean, we're talking, it's funny we're talking about all the things we hate about Valorant, but literally we, we play Valorant all the time. It's because we enjoy the game. We wish they'd yeah. just fix yeah. it. Yeah. But and, honestly, if I started playing Call of Duty first, I'd probably like it better. Uh, just, yeah. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the game is it's smoother. There's less. There's, and I say less. There's little to no hacking. I mean, and I like the way you, that cover is actually cover. Yes. Like you play with your environment in in Valorant. You're playing against the environment, yeah. whether you're attacking or defending. So the Valorant doesn't have like a lot of. There's no camouflage. It's just basically mm -hmm. it's like a. Um, it's super cartoony. Yeah, it's like a paintball field. Yeah. yeah. It's just blocks. That's right. And yeah. somewhere to plant. Yeah. And that's really mm -hmm. it. There's some hallways, but that's kind of where you're at. So you can't, if you're hiding, it's literally just you ducking in a corner from one angle. That's right. Which anybody else can really see you. Yeah. If they come yeah. from any other angle yeah. than the one you're trying to hide from, mm -hmm. you just get to die. And since it's the only place to hide, they just pre-fire because they know you're there. Yeah. You don't have a choice. So it's basically you, you just run out and engage them as hard and as fast as you can. Yeah. And you don't aim down sights. You don't try to zoom in and get headshots. You just run at them and spray. You, right. And you surprisingly you get a lot of kills, and it's really nice. If you flick to the left or right, the Vandal headshots every yeah. time. That's why my headshot count, because mm. I'm like, I can't aim. Aim works is useless, so I'm just going to flick, and boom, headshot. Flick. Flick. But you got to admit, it does kind of make you feel really good, though. No, it makes me feel like when they actually fix the issue, I'm not going to know how to shoot anymore. Feel, uh, I feel like we have I mean, said that's true. Well, here's the thing. I feel like we've said this before, but it is very obvious that there has been evolution and growth in our gameplays. I, I would say, especially yeah, in our gameplays, the game hasn't really. I was about to say. I, well, I mean, we. It's. I think it's more we have evolved to play the game. We've adapted the way it needs us to play to right. be good, mm -hmm. rather than. It's not that we've specifically gotten better. We've just got better at the AI of this game. Yeah. The way it forces you to play. You can't really be tactical in Valorant. That's going to get you killed. Yes. I was Every about to say, though. Like, let's push slow. We all, I, I would say we have gotten better because we have grown from using shotguns that you just kind of <laughs> shoot and hope people get hit to actual guns that involve aiming. A mm -hmm. And aiming is a loose term because I promise you I do not aim. I run at them with my cursor close to wherever their center is yeah. and just don't let off the trigger. I, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I guess that's kind of, that's, that's true too. I mean, there is trigger discipline. You're more guaranteed a headshot if you keep, you know, so Burst fire. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. So there's still like, you can still have to have some form of gunplay. So the trigger discipline I, I really have to use is not so much the don't, just not let off it's i'm going to have to reload at some point is there going to be somebody in front of me when i'm trying to reload mm -hmm. yeah so normally it's get a kill pull back a little bit reload go engage again it's very hard yeah i'm one of those like now my brain is so like you know your brain just becomes programmed to do certain things so it's like you'll go to shoot and then you'll go to automatically reload and unfortunately sometimes what happens is people are pushing you and you're like I don't know why my brain is suddenly telling me I have to hit R at this very moment yeah. but I'm hitting R and I'm going to fucking die or you could just hit 2 and switch to your classic yeah and probably kill the person in front of you but you just stand there while you reload like I'm oh, sorry God. or I'm you sorry. watch them reload and you're like if I had just switched to my classic right. I would have killed you because yep. we're reloading at the same time my favorite I mean, I'm working on honestly, my favorite one on ones are the ones where everybody sh like you're shooting at somebody else, but you both run out of bullet. Chris had this la a couple of days uh. ago where he's running and shooting at this jet and the jet. He runs out of bullets and then the jet's shooting at him, but she runs out of bullets. So it's, <laughs> a, it's a race like, to okay, reload. Okay, just reload. But those are sort of the, the fun parts of Valor. And I now, think the knifing is the same as Call of Duty from what I understand. It is. The knifing yeah. is super similar. Um. In Call of Duty, a knife to the back just kills them. Like, there is no, I have to do it twice. Oh, so. If you sneak up beside, behind somebody and, that, and you, bury your knife in their skull, yeah. they don't get up. But not in Valorant. No, you have to swipe them at least twice and usually mm, three. Usually three times, which really sucks. Yeah, because if you, 
because of the way the Valorant gameplay is, like you can be literally right up on them and swing and somehow miss. Yeah. But then they bury theirs in your throat. Yeah. And you're like, oh god. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a weird distance thing that I haven't with knifing I haven't figured out because you can be up on them and it yeah. still doesn't hit them. I mm-hmm. just shoot them. If like let's say like Sova, part of his ability kit is that he goes into an owl drone. If I pop up on him and he's in there, I'm just gonna shoot him. It's like I, I'm not yeah. even wasting the time trying to knife. Well, and if you're familiar with Riot Games League of Legends and you're you know how the animations can screw you. Same with uh, Valorant. You can get stuck in an animation that's gonna get you killed. Yeah. So oh, yeah. be very careful. Yeah, there's no, uh, what is it called when, like, for Kate? what is it called when you... Orb walking. Orb walking in Valorant. Yeah, or you can cancel the animation. You can't do that. You can try. The only one who even remotely has it is Jet. Where if it, So if you cancel her ultimate, you have to go through the whole thing again when you pull the knives out again. So you know how you pull the knives out and then get your gun back out. Yeah. If you don't let her finish pulling her knives out, when you go to switch back to X to pull the knives out, you have to go through the whole animation. And most people, like, for a long time didn't realize that. Like, you can't cancel animation. It's a very difficult, especially coming from League of Legends, where the entire game is just trying to cancel the animation. Yeah. You so have you... to become familiar with, you don't have to watch the animation. Go ahead and follow through. See, I never played League of Legends. I played yeah. other first-person shooters, and this is the first one that I've come to that is... Deflicted. That plays like this. Yeah. Um, Deflicted? Like, well, Deflicted. like CSGO, Halo, Call of Duty, they all basically have the same exact gameplay style. Like, you can mm-hmm. set up your triggers and your melees and your grenades and all however you want, but the guns all operate basically off the same premise. The The running all operates off the same premise. Um, you don't... This game is just the way they have it programmed is really weird, and it's really counterintuitive if you come from other first-person shooters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's that's really what I've strange. heard is that it's like you're having to relearn basically your gameplay, which it I guess it's good for me and Angie because we did not come from first-person shooters. Yeah, well, so if you play like I said, if you play Call of Duty, you basically live ADS. Like you, if you yeah. use an assault rifle, I watched them as a yeah. You live ADS, and you also get mm-hmm. used to the um, three or four round bursts. You don't just let hang on. Because you're not going to be anywhere near them by the time you run out right. of rounds. So you get used to the, the two, three, four round bursts. And that's yeah. it. But this game, I, I promise you don't have to let off. You can just bum rush them. No aim whatsoever mm-hmm. and you'll get kills. And it's if the you jump and thing. shoot, it's going to be Way a better. Shot. Yeah. It's yeah. really weird. Yeah. It's almost if like. If you peek a corner and just pre-fire, you're It's almost them. like there's aim bot built in if you're running. It, it's yeah. really strange. Well, and and there's a couple of skins that they're like, it's aimbot skin. Cause, and this is weird, but the Reaver Vandal skin has like the higher percentage to head. That's why I use it. Yeah. I'm serious. Like, I know I'm going to headshot with that Reaver Vandal. Right. Like, and it may be an issue with the way it's programmed to yeah. where uh, the way they see it, it is it's different. It's like a pay to win. Yeah. You buy these skins, you're going to get a headshot. It's really weird because I don't buy any skins. And, uh, but that's why in game people are like, can I get your Reaver Vandal? You know, I'll buy you. Let me get your Reaver Vandal because you're going to get that headshot. I like the skins. They're pretty. I oh, I too. love the skins. However, yeah. until they fix the actual gameplay, I'm not going to give them a dime. Plus, I'm pretty sure as much shit as I talk about Riot, they're going to ban me at some point. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm always like reporting stuff and I'm like, is this your fucked up game or an aimbot? You decide. <laughs> you fucking Riot idiots. has like like a, a watch list for people well, and I'm you're on sure it. I'm pretty sure that they never hear what I like. They've just blocked me from seeing my reports. Yeah, like they're ghosting you. It's, yeah, it's never anything pleasant. It's always like, you're a fucking idiot. Your game's stupid. And either this is a cheater or you're I'm you just, know, I'm derp just, derp. I was about to say, it's funny talking about this because if you, if you were to I'm ever, triggered on I was about to say, if you ever sit here and wonder which three of us are the ones that are going to rage the hardest in this game. It's not me. It's Becky. It uh, is not me. It is not even close to Becky. Oh, Angie it, it's gets close. Uh, it is it, not. It's close to. I will. I will contend that on days in which I am in a very bad mood, I can rage pretty hard. Okay, so we'll say four days a month. I rage. Becky blames that. I think that's yeah. a good thing. Yeah. You don't rage. Angie rages. Angie gets irate, yeah. and it is the best thing in the I world. I rage. Becky blames. I think I kind of rage though, especially when people are mean. And I gotta, you gotta mention, here's the other thing. There's voice chat in this game. So you always do get like oh, the yeah. 13, 14 year old boys who are like, yeah. you need to get back in the kitchen. And here's, here's, this is my favorite part of this entire thing is that there, I get it. There are streamers and girls out there who this really, they take it to heart. Like, yeah. you know, you treat women, you shouldn't treat women bad in video games, all this stuff. But then you get to the older women 
the women who give no more shits about anything. Yeah. And then it's just like, oh, you want to talk shit? We gonna talk shit today. Angie literally put a kid, told a kid to go sit in the kitchen and make her a sandwich. And he was shocked out of his attitude. He was like, what? You can't say that to me. I'm like, yeah, I can. Yeah, the fuck I can. I can. Know your place. Go make me a sandwich. And he was like, what about fix your car? I'm like, no. Sandwich. I want a sandwich. See, I go to like, bitch, I look at dead bodies for a living. You don't hurt me at all. I just can. I just. Well, I just don't really talk unless necessary. The other day, a rando asked me, uh, you know, Sage, do you have a mic? And I said, yes. Are you going to use it? Nerp. At the end of the game, I said, good game. And they're like, oh. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. No, we're out of this game. Yeah. Because as a female in a game, you get you get a lot of shit. We're going to so, lose. We and Angie has like a sweet little voice. But the thing like, I'm, the no, 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 listen, Heather, my coworker was like listening to our podcast. And she's like, Angie sounds so sweet. It's true, <laughs> Heather. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep believing it Heather meanwhile if you ever need Angie if you need somebody to go at somebody you're like hey girl you're tapped in go like just the way you insult people is just amazing she, put me and Chris together are fighting she gets irate yeah <laughs> but it's fun like again mm-hmm. I don't I've been playing video, like first person shooter so long there's nothing you can say to me anymore because I've heard it all so like my first like month in I get called the n-word Mm-hmm. in game and i'm like oh they must be really mad <laughs> <laughs> okay well and it's like coming from league of legends so there's no voice chat unless you're in a team it's only typing and then you so, can mute it easily yeah, well that but at the same time like we got really good at like typing insults yeah. in because it's like why do you fucking suck blah, 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 blah. and like still playing the game like mm-hmm. there's an entire video of like south koreans playing league of legends who are like flaming their team but still getting kills so you're at that level yeah. so then when you hear the voice you're like oh Oh, that's a person. Yeah. That's an actual person. See, and I'm used to PlayStation where there was no typing. There mm-hmm. was just literally verbal beration. Yeah. Nonstop. Yeah. And, I mean, if it involved your mom or your dad or your brother yeah. or your play <laughs> or your mental capacity, believe me, it got said. And at some point you're just like, yeah, they're just pissed off. The end. My brother was, uh, I want to say he was number six in the world on COD for explosives. He, his name was actually Explosive Expert. So when he had moved in with me, I had the Xbox. I'm like, oh, I want to play Call of Duty with you. And he's like, mm. no, you I mean, don't. he let me. Yeah. But he quickly unlet me. But <laughs> <laughs> I got the worst insult I've ever gotten by like, it sounded like a six year old. I swear to God. And I'm like, yeah, he's right though. He's right. But here's the thing. I may rage, but if I deserve the insult, eh. I just don't even, eh. it's just eh. background static. Once you've played for eh. so long, you just don't care. But I hate being attacked for being a girl we're gonna lose there's girls on my team oh yeah meanwhile it's like i have more kills than you it's like dude i'm, I'm fucking carrying you yeah. and you're I mean, insulting me and that's the thing is it's like oh my god well, it's a fucking girl I'm like pride yeah i'm like bitch i'm probably as old as your mom please stop or you get the can i get your snapchat uh i'm 46 yeah, the only <laughs> <laughs> i don't even talk mad shit to people i just berate them in weird ways like we were yeah. playing the other day i was like get out of my garage <laughs> <laughs> and they were not happy at all <laughs> that was it like do not come to my so end they of pushed the map. him he killed them all again and he was like i said stay out of my garage yeah, i told you this was my garage <laughs> uh-huh. i love it because right now it's pride month and uh, okay here's the thing we all had the banners we are very very pro lgbtq i mean if you don't fucking know that at yeah, this point it's a problem but it's funny because Chris is Chris is real quick to be like somebody was like well how do you get those banners and he's like suck a bunch of dicks bro <laughs> you gotta be gay homie you gotta be gay homie and if you're not gay you ain't getting it but that guy was pretty cool he was like well he's like I guess gotta do what I gotta do <laughs> yeah. Well, sure, I want that banner yeah. yeah it's a pretty cool banner actually he's okay. like well, let me let me let me you got any tips and yeah. Chris was like just a dick tip <laughs> <laughs> cup the balls I don't know. I don't know what you're looking for bro. and I mean here's the thing sometimes you really do meet good teammates good yeah. all around people who are just holding Wholesome, like we have we've friended some people that are just legit decent human beings like whether or not they're yeah whether or not they're good at the game or not doesn't matter until the, we didn't mean that part about two buyers we just like you're a decent wholesome human being however <laughs> if you're a decent person i will be friends with you and i will play with you i don't care mm-hmm. if you're good or bad that yeah part right. doesn't matter right i'm not there i'm there to enjoy myself like, well, right I, I, think, I mean, I'm going to flame you. I, I will tell you, like, breath, especially, like, my tolerance level <laughs> under for... Under my breath. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. Like, like my tolerance level for newer players is I'm very understanding if yeah. I just know. Like, not one of us said anything to Robin last night. No. Actually, she got kills. We, like, hyped her up. Damn, yeah. you're amazing. Listen, my fa- I told Angie my favorite moment ever in a Valorant game is all of us are dead. We're on bind. 
And I switch over and Bobby, who has played we maybe died three on games. B. Yeah. We, yeah. We're on B site trying to like diffuse diffuse the bomb and it switches over when you die to another perspective of your teammate and bobby's just shooting arrows and he was so proud of himself because he had defended a i mean you can't take that away you can't take that away i was like bobby he's like i'm getting a hang of these arrows i'm like boy get a hang get a hang of those arrows i said you you do you boo boo you got this buddy again i don't i get mad when i make a mistake yeah but that's kind of the only time here's the thing i'll rage at myself too and like i get sort of mad when people I play with that are when we're playing with people that know what they're supposed to do and just don't for whatever reason mm-hmm. yeah. then I get upset but other than that whatever man it's a game yeah like if you can't do whatever job you're supposed to do I just won't go to that site with you well and the other thing for me I is like I, I don't I don't like I said I don't mind if somebody's playing bad and like they are trying that's a different but if you're trolling the thing about that is if you are yeah if you are trolling you have wasted basically 20 minutes plus of my time. Yeah, I just don't count on you anymore. Yeah, That's where it ends for me. Like, if you're supposed to do something and you're not doing it, I'm just not going to expect you to do it. No. That's kind of where it ends. It's like, now I have no respect for you. And that's the thing is um, you, you really do have to learn how to play your roles. Once what you you're le- supposed to do. Once you are able to understand how these maps work and what's going on, learn a role. I mm-hmm. think that's... Actually, let's... I think we should close out with that. What's your tip well, for learning? I... Uh, oh... A tip for learning? Like, a tip for a new player. Just the tip. Just the tip. A tip for a new player for me is if you aren't good at tactics and decision-making and chess, uh, if you have no game sense, listen to people when they tell you. Um, Because, especially if you're new, just just listen. You, you may think you know, but people who've played the game longer or have a better sense of it actually can tell you when to rotate. You think you know, but you have no idea. You have no idea. Like, I may not have the best aim, but I've got a phenomenal game sense. So Our tactics it, work really well. Yeah. it Yeah, because you, me, and Becky, we are very cohesive on split and mid because... We know what we're supposed to do. Yeah, and we have good call-outs, and we've got a good game sense, and uh, it really sucks to have a bad call-out. That's not another thing. If you don't know, don't say it, because you will put an action in place that usually causes us to and lose. Don't what, say they're all here. Yeah, what she means by call out is if you see two people, don't tell your team they're all where you are. Yeah. Because it may just be those two people. Because we'll rotate and die because they're waiting yeah. for us to rotate. If you say two here, yeah. we will stay in place. And if be I like, say, I two. saw three of them, I don't know where the other two are. Yeah. Stay where you're at. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that way, it, it, because the entire the entirety of the game is you're either, you're trying to, especially if you're defending, like, if you leave a site, you left it open for somebody to come plan right. on the site. If you say they're they're somewhere they're not, and you'll get people killed. You'll get people killed because they'll be around like, a different mm, place. They weren't there, or just say last I saw. Don't again, say they're in grudge. Here's how I look no, at it: they're if not in grudge. The game starts off at five v five. If they get the first kill, basically you're down twenty percent. Yeah. yeah. If they get two, you're down forty percent. Right. And, and if you have tough. the bad call out, <laughs> they are up. Yeah, way, way up huge. on us. Yeah, you're giving them an advantage that didn't need to exist in the first place. So yeah, get your get your call out person. Um, don't over rotate. I mean that's why listen. they that's why they talk about having IGLs in game leaders. Watch your fucking mini map. Oh my god. Yeah, the, I will as a as a former League of Legends player, which I'm only former because I play Valorant more than anything. The mini map in League. By far, everybody told you if you if you studied your mini map while you were playing, that's how you progressed and promoted mm-hmm. as a player. It's the same with Valorant. Yeah. Now, if you die like in a weird way and you're like, I looked at the mini map and got killed, I'm not even gonna be mad. Yeah, sometimes that happens. It happens a lot yeah. to me. It's like, oh yeah, I looked at the mini map just for a second, and got head blasted because somebody jumped around a corner with a shotgun. But you're all twelve of them in the dome. But your mini map is something that will literally inform your like, even if you die. If you yeah. see three people, your mini map will call yeah. out to three people. And even if the it, like a uh, you don't know who it is, it'll, it'll have like three red question marks. There's yeah. a lot of information on the mini map. But that means there were three right. members of the other team down mm-hmm. there, even if they didn't get a clear look at who it was. Yeah. Or if somebody we know carries the bomb every round, and Track we see them, them on the mini map, we're starting over. Yeah. If you're also just a tip, if you're the person that is designated to carry the spike, do not peak first do not go onto a site until it's clear mm-hmm. because you just set your uh, the rest of your team up yeah. to be destroyed you also have to have a good game sense um you're when gonna to rotate. have yeah you're gonna have to mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. You're occasionally going to try to take a site that is not meant to be taken. <laughs> right. You have to get the yeah. hell out of and there. it'll, yeah. I mean, it'll happen where you'll just somebody you may get flanked on, You're you may lose. have where you have yeah. somebody shoot mm-hmm. you. But the the point of it is, if you are care, if you are the bomb carrier, unless you have cleared the site somehow, um, you you are really leaving your team at a disadvantage because now they have to retake the site and then plant the bomb, and then everybody knows mm-hmm. where the bomb went. That's like, why if you watch the tournaments, they'll drop the spike. Yeah. Go on, take kills, and then rotate back at the spike. Yeah, they just play for picks until because, they get an advantage. Yeah, they don't want the spike to drop in enemy territory. It's it's really risky, and they're pros, so they're very good at it. Yeah. But even then, you'll see where they can't get back to the spike sometimes. Well, and even then, a lot of times what they're doing is it's not one. They're not five pushing onto a site, leaving the bomb, and then having somebody get back, back well, and get it. The, they're spread the, out, like, getting information. And also by leaving it back there, they're not dying with it on site, creating firing lanes that mm-hmm. they can't retake. Right. Easily. And that's yeah. my, yeah, that's the big thing is, like, once you know the spike is down, everybody's rotating to where the spike is. Yeah, like, because cause you it have is to, very rare to get that spike away from them. Yeah. Like, well, super they, rare. Here's the thing. You have to go through them to plan it. All they have to do is stay there. They don't yeah. have to move. They yep. just have to be near it. Hide and watch the land. That's angles. why most maps are considered defensive favored because a lot of times your your only job is to keep them off of your site. And even if yeah. you don't keep them off your site, everybody yeah. knows where they are. If you're watching an angle, watch that fucking angle. Yeah, if you're on defense, Stop turning. you don't have to get a single kill to win a match. Yeah. All they all you have to do is stop it's them make sure from they planting. don't plant. That's yeah. it. Uh, yeah, and that's the other thing. You may have low count like somebody on your team may have low kill count but if they've done their job don't give them matter. shit well, because then, some matter. roles aren't meant to have high kill counts yeah. so sages normally don't have huge kill counts mm-hmm. but they don't have to their job is there as basically backup they heal people mm-hmm. they they block Slow, off areas yeah. yeah that's why and, if you've ever heard the term battle mercy from overwatch where it was like an aggro support when you yeah. say mm-hmm. battle sage that means that sage had to pop off yeah yeah which is amazing and terrifying to behold yeah but thanks, Battle Sage. Yeah, our Battle Sage. Our yeah, battle but I sage. like games where I end with like eight to ten kills. <laughs> that meant that everybody else did what they were supposed to do. I like games where I end with twenty nine kills. <laughs> we're looking at oh, you. Are we again, talking? Those are you talking? To rip. It's been a long day. <laughs> but I will say the other my I I don't know Chris if you have a, a tip a, just the tip you want to give to your uh, new players. I will tell everybody the same thing I tell anybody for if you want to be good at any FPS, learn the map. That's the first yes. thing you should do. Don't try to just jump in there and play with people that know what they're doing because you're it's you're not really learning it. Go into a custom game mode, run through all the maps, kind of learn how they operate. Where, yeah, where the angles are, which ways to run, where the ups and downs are, how to get on the high ground, how to get to the low ground, how to mi- go through mids and backsides. Mm-hmm. That is a bigger help than jumping in there and trying to learn it on right, the fly. And, and go in regularly and practice stuff and constantly improve. You yeah. need to kaizen in everything, yeah. mm-hmm. in, including your gameplay. But that's the one, even with Call of Duty, like the thing that slows most people down when they release new maps, when they'd have like a map pack come out. People would jump in like in game mode and try to go to like multiplayer and learn it. It's hard to learn where you're being shot at and murdered and you only made it a mm-hmm. quarter away through the first hallway. Right. Like, just download the map packs, go into a custom game mode, yeah. and run through the map a couple right. times. It's like in League, when a new uh, character comes out, you don't just jump into a game. Yeah. You go into practice with them. against bots, and you practice against the bots. Yep, and that's the that's the one thing that will help you be better faster mm-hmm. than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Awesome. Yes. 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 I am honored. I would say... My tip. I was just waiting for somebody to ask me about my tip, but we don't have to ask me about you told me What's your tip? tips. Like you and I went back and forth with like 97 tips. I was just going to so. say, well, no, I was just going to add know your role, which we've talked about several times. Please know your role. Please, like, if you are a duelist, please duel. If you are a sentinel, don't duel. Which I, I duel. I know. I know I, you duel. I duel the best I can. I know. You duel as much as you can. Because a duelist, at the end of the day, their job is to get at least a couple of kills and clear a site for your sentinels yeah. and controllers. But here's the thing. Don't sit in the back and expect your duelist to run on site in 1v5 right. and not die. Don't give them shit when you sent them in as a sacrificial I promise lamb, I will, though. If and you tell died. me to go on site, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> go with and support. Like, get information. Right. Like, look at the mini-map. See, uh, oh, they're in that corner. Da, da, da. Heal. Like. Well, you also help your duelist. Well, and that's that's absolutely the truth. And if you are playing any of the defensive roles, try to ensure that their sacrifices, when they have sacrificed, have not been in vain. Because right. 
at the end of the day, the duelist, once the site has been taken, their job is to go yeah. find other kills. Because let me tell you, guess how controllers and sentinels lose because the duelist didn't die in the beginning on the other yeah. team. Right. And that Raina's coming in and she's fucking your shit up. She's 1v5 in. She's yeah. aggressive. Every time. That's literally the one character that if she's in her ultimate, she can 1v5 you if you don't push Easily. her together. Yeah. Easily. And we all know it. So leave your Raina or Raze alive. Help, help, help. Oh, that's another good tip. Watch who has ultimate up. Yes. That Absol- will determine where you go. Especially if you look and you see that you all have no ultimates and the rest of the team have ultimates. <laughs> My hair scared the shit out of me. I thought it was that spider. <laughs> Also, don't waste your utility very early in the round if you don't have to, because now it's very expensive. That was yeah. one of the biggest tips that I learned from a pro is that, or listening to pros is like, don't waste your utility at the beginning because you'll have to use it later to either retake. I so, throw a boom bot right away. Well, that, they that, can kiss my ass. Well, that makes He's an sense. Attention getter. But that's yeah. exactly I'm not what. an attention get, information gather. Yeah. He's an attention getter. He is. What the fuck, Angie? He does get their attention. He does. They're like, oh, that fucking raise is mid. I was going to say, my last one, learn at least two characters. Yeah. Because inevitably somebody is going to take your main, and then you are have con- to back up with a phoenix, and it sucks. <laughs> and if what you're doing isn't working, switch it up. Yeah, yeah. just keep trying different stuff. Because they're going to learn you just like you've learned them. Yeah, don't ever do the same thing every single round. Yeah. If you like to go sit in this one corner, it's okay to sit in that corner occasionally. Don't yeah. move to a different corner. Move to a different spot. Yeah. It's like playing a chess game and you open with the exact same move yeah. every time. They're going okay. to wreck you. And in this game, if you're sitting in the same spot, there are guns that will just shoot through the wall and kill you. Yeah. And if they know you're there, they don't get a look. They can just shoot at it. Yeah. And if you were in the back, yeah. yeah. I can't tell you how aggravating it is. Stop sitting heaven in the corner by the box. <laughs> Everybody's every thinking round. it, bro. Stop getting sniped split, right there. Stop. We all know we're here. Every time I see the blue X, I'm like, there he is. Listen, I'm, all I'm going to say is I learned at least two Killjoy setups for Ascent. Two. I run all over God's green earth with rays. I don't care. Like, you tell me which where, what site you want me to be on. I have three spots I'll be in. Yeah. And it's never the same thing. Right. But like, if you're a controller, or Sentinel, learn your lineups. Yeah. Yeah. I have learned mine. You don't have to do that. No. You I know how to balance grenades and Roomba. Yeah. I, I haven't learned my lineups, though. You know. Enough. You know your Killjoy lineups. I mean, True, you don't know where to stand on the scent to throw them, blah, blah, blah. It's fine. You know a lot of others. Well, I just shoot them instead. At that point, I just go and shoot them because it's too hard. And the lie detector test has determined that's often a lie. Listen, I try <laughs> to shoot them. Let me say Becky that. Becky will face into a wall like this. Well, it's because I have to look at my stuff. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing is I don't think you guys can see my stuff on my screen. I think Killjoy, I know. You have you, to. You have to be facing yeah. it, which really sucks because let's say somebody's coming up behind you and you're having to face it because you hear somebody's tapping. You're going to die from behind. It's yeah. just the way it is. Yeah. Just set it all off to hell with it. I know. And that's what I've had to start doing is I will just like flick myself one way and then back. Because it may just pull them off of it long enough for yeah. us to win. Well, I'm thinking, well, yeah. And that's sort of the thing is I'm like, let me just let me just let it go. Let it go. Again, we need to get we need to defend for thirty nine seconds. The yeah, rest of the time. One last piece of advice. When you shoot and kill somebody, move. Reposition. Don't yeah, don't stand there. Yeah. Reposition. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll find you. Reposition. They'll well not only that, but on your you. on their mini map it shows exactly where they died. Yeah. So they know within And where you were. Yeah. And it'll question mark on uh, stage was here. So move. Yeah, don't stand move. there. Move. And also I think with going back to like learning the agent thing, it teaches you how to play against agents. Yeah. Like, you kind of have to know how to play against them in order to counter them. You have to know them. how to play them to counter them. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I know how to play against... I've played Reyna enough to know how to counter her. Do I win a lot against her? Probably not. But at least okay. I know what to look for. You know how I counter her? She is literally my worst. Shoot her in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Reyna's my, my Surprise her and run too. directly at her because she mm-hmm. likes to run directly at you. And if Confuse you have a teammate her. who is involved in these altercations, try and distract like, that is my biggest complaint sometimes is if, if you have a teammate engaged in a fight and you know that and you're there too, engage. Even if you die, they've, had to, they've had to like yeah. trade it. It's called trades. Yes. It, your teammate may die, but if you got the kill and traded, yeah, it's fine. win. It's 4v4 now. And well, again, I'm a, I'm a duelist entry frag or whatever you want to call it. My whole goal is to go one to one. If I can get on site, kill one of them and injure any other of them. That's a win. Well, I was going to say on top, it's just not even the killing part. Like, 
Reyna has a blind. You can shoot down. If you have a teammate on site fighting the Reyna and you see her throw her blind oh, out, yeah. shoot the blind for I them. I always shoot the blind down. Shoot the blind yeah. down. If you see Sky ulting, which her ult will... If, yeah. it, it if you're a support character, this yeah. is your job. It'll shoot the Roombas, shoot the blinds, shoot, shoot the thing the that tracks you because yeah. that help, that assists your teammates. Even mm-hmm. if it's not coming at you, it's, yeah. it's, it's a team game. Your job at that point is not to entry frag. It's to protect the entry fraggers, mm-hmm. which includes shoot the blinds down, shoot the wolves, shoot the owls, shoot the this, shoot the that. Yeah. Do Shoot your job. That. We expect a lot of duelists with no support. Yeah, do your job. That's do your job. Do your job. The more you know. Do do mm-hmm. do. And don't play expect with me to your play teammates. Support, I'm bad at that. Yeah, no. play with your teammates. <laughs> I, I really want one day for you to just play a day of playing a, a, a sentinel. Just a sentinel. Any sentinel you want to play. Uh, I played a. Uh... He's played Brimstone. Yeah, Brim. Remember? I'm fine with Brim. Brim is a controller. Brim is a controller. I'm talking about a straight up sentinel. That's that's your cipher, your killjoy, your sage, and I think that's it. Yeah, cipher's an initiator. No, she he's a sentinel. Okay, he's the lesser of the two. I mean, three sentinels. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll play cipher, just hide. Yeah, he is legitimately he his his yeah. gameplay is to lurk. Yeah, I'll just be away from everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they tripped my tripwire at B. Good luck, guys. I'm gonna I'm hide back here and look spawn. at my camera. <laughs> yeah. I love the See you kid. later. Listen, though, if you get a, somebody who plays a fantastic cypher, you are fucked. Sometimes. Like, the problem is, like, all his stuff is, it's not a surprise. You hear his rep. camera. You see his tripwires. The only thing that surprises you is his ultimate. And I, I just don't care. Well, no. If you if you ever have to walk through his smoke and you, like, walk through it, he can see you. That's why it's so. Yeah, but you just don't walk through it. Well, and that's the thing, but he knows you're mm-hmm. there. Like, he's heard it you. It makes it... Yeah, it makes noise. <laughs> and mm-hmm. I will tell you, if you see a phenomenal cypher, and we've played against some, and I have seen some streaming, they will, they're going to get you. Like, mm-hmm. they can aggro this very This guy's well. toast is a good cypher. Yeah. If you want to learn how to play. He literally will oh. just go into his yeah. smoke. So there are some streamers you can watch. Like, you can watch Tiny Lady play uh, Raze. Flights plays Raze. You watch Flights. That dude is Yep. Pokemane Hiko plays Sova really well. Um, Pokey actually plays a lot of really well. Yeah. So does Hiko, but you can watch, uh, you can watch Toast the- play Cypher. Cypher. Yeah. If you want a good Viper, uh, Valkyrie. Yep. On YouTube, like just go watch people. You learn yeah, a lot and, of shit. And there's a lot of videos on lineups. There's a lot of videos on how yeah. to play certain maps on certain agents. I legit got a lot better when I started watching videos on how to play. Because I play Rage. Like when I started mm-hmm. watching Flights and Tiny play Rays, I'm like, oh. Yeah. This is what I'm supposed to just be aggro yeah. as fuck. Mm-hmm. I, Tiny started playing Sage, and then I'm like, oh, that's a great Sage play. Never be afraid. Think you know everything because you don't. It's always improvement. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just happy to see I play Killjoy like a lot of other people. Yeah. Every time I see like a pro play Sage like me, I'm like, see? I'm I did doing it right. right, Mom. I'm just Are you happy proud I don't play Braves like I'm a fumbling idiot anymore. <laughs> I feel like, but the thing is, like, the game, it's, you have to learn how to play it. it, it and it's a fun game. Play with your friends. Be an idiot. Be a bunch of idiots if you want to. It's a lot of fun. But don't ruin other people's games. Yeah, don't ruin it. Being an idiot. Or you can play Spike Rushes or any of the other modes. You can go into custom and then be really an idiot. Like, hey, let's try this lineup. Mm -hmm. You send Rumba here and I will here and then you throw me. I can can op you from this window at the 40 degree angle. Which is only going to work one time out of a million. But But you know what? It worked. It it did done to work. So it's going to work. Okay. Hey, Becky, where can they find us? You can find us on Facebook at the Free Rotation Podcast. You can find us on Twitter at the Free Rotation. We also stream on YouTube, on Twitch. We stream on Twitch at the Free Rotation. You can check us out on YouTube. We also have a backlog at the Free Rotation.com. You can check us out on Weebie Geeks. Check out all the great podcasts at WeebieGeeksPC.com. Okay, bye. Wait, coming up, we are going to be interviewing Unicole Unicron. That's right. If you remember our last episode of the Unicult, uh, she's going to come on and basically uh, clear the air. Clear the air. We, she says we got some stuff wrong. Ah. Um, so she's going to come on and, um, we're going to be very respectful. So please don't send her hate tweets and stuff. Um, but yeah, everybody has a right to speak. And she said, there's a reason for everything she does. She said, even the Macarena, Chris, she was like, even the Macarena, cause remember I do. we had said that. I'm yeah. excited. So Chris we're looking forward to that. Tweaked out. And, um, we've gotten a lot of feedback, uh, about it. So just keep an open mind, not you know, join a cult, open my... Okay, I gotta be very... Don't, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah. Don't just run out and join a cult. Well, listen, we want to give her, the, come on and talk. give her the platform to talk about it. If you agree with her, that's great. If you don't, mm-hmm. that's, that's good fine, too. too. Yeah. That's, that, this is and America. And honestly, you know, she was super pleasant, very nice. Like I, I said before, she's very smart. Um, She just wants to come talk, so... 
Well, we'll make it happen. It'll yes. it'll be soon. Soon, TM. It just depends on when we're. We will yeah. let her say her piece, and that's fair. But she'll also have to answer some questions, which is yeah. also fair. Yeah, and that's that's what she said she's prepared for. And more importantly, we're going Sasquatch hunting this weekend. Uh, we are going Moon Eyed People hunting this weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Would it be this weekend? Am I releasing this episode tomorrow? Or am I releasing it on Tuesday? No, not only that, we're not going Sam's Quench. Honey. If we happen to find one, I'm, I'm going like, to eat it. I'm going to Fort stuff. We're, we're going up to the, we're going to the Appalachians, and we're going to go look for yeah. the moon-eyed people and the not deer and the not. So keep a lookout for that if we remember to charge our equipment. Okay, guys, have a great day. Love you. Bye. Maybe. Maybe. Thank <laughs> you.